So let me figure this out. So um, first of all, I know just about everyone in here, and it feels like I'm with family at home, so I don't have to explain. So who's the blonde here, the American woman who says she can do icons? So great, we can skip over that. So, uh, concerning uh, St. Mary and icons, um, I, I put together some slides that it's uh, telling basically the story of St. Mary, that not just my icons, not just Coptic icons, but also uh, other Orthodox icons and also some European art. And we start off with, with St. Mary that um, when we see her with her mother, Saint Anna, you can see that she is a fully formed adult, but in infant size. And uh, then with her as a child, holding the child Jesus, and being held by, again, Saint Anna, you, you see the generational uh, connections. And of course she's also in prophecy. Uh, one of the, the Catholic icons that always interested me, and I've done several of them, but not this one, is Saint Mary as uh, symbolized by the burning bush. That, that was a prophecy that Saint Mary would also uh, hold <laughs> God within her and, and not perish from it. It is said that St. Luke, the Apostle, was the first one who, who uh, did an image of St. Mary. And this is a very nice Greek icon showing an angel helping him draw St. Mary as she is posing with the infant Jesus. And the four icons surrounding that are claimed by various churches, various nations, to be that original icon. And uh, whether that icon still exists or not, or maybe it's hidden and someday it will come to light, I don't know, but it's just interesting the, the power that it, it has of the first icon, the first image done of St. Mary. Uh, these are a couple of mine, of mine uh, obviously the Annunciation. That was the first Annunciation I ever did. And then uh, the Nativity, which I think this one belongs to someone here. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I always enjoy doing nativities. Obviously, you know, you, you have angels in the sky, you have wise men. And yes, we know that the wise men did not attend the nativity. But in a lot of icons, you find that two or more events are shown in the same icon. One icon that I, I can name as an example, it shows the Holy Family traveling to Egypt. But first, you see Joseph sitting, receiving the, the message from God to take the Holy Family to, to Egypt. And then on the other side of the icon, he is leading them to Egypt. It's wearing the same thing. He's seen twice in the icon, but it's just a way of telling the story. Um, the icons of young Jesus here, uh, this is a separate one of the, the wise men coming to see Jesus. And uh, the circumcision and being presented at the temple. In the middle, we see it's when the children of Bethlehem, or the, the, the children of Jerusalem were being, no, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, were being slaughtered. And it's the Holy Family in the back, who is on their way 
to Egypt. And in doing this icon, I was asked to do this for a church, showing the slaughter of the innocents. And instead of having blood on the ground, I tried to make it easier, especially for kids to look at. I made it red flowers to show where the blood would be. And uh, the angels are carrying the children's souls up to heaven. And even in this horrible, horrible night, that Jesus is surrounded by the gold of heaven in the protection of God the Father. And then, of course, this one is where Jesus wandered off as a young boy, and his parents had to hunt for him. And it was interesting in, in a Coptic fashion to try to show St. Mary being aggravated with him, that he wandered off, but still, you know, he's my son, and okay, I, I, why did you make us do this, etc., but we forgive you. And I want to point out that icons are not an attempt at European-style art. Icons are considered windows into heaven. We are seeing uh, the saints not as their human form necessarily, but we're seeing the spiritual essence. And one thing I've always admired about Coptic icons is that they're generally shown with a pleasant look on their face, with the idea they have suffered on earth, but now they're in heaven and at peace. And you see Greek icons, they look serious, and Russian icons, they look really serious, but Coptic icons have a simple nature to them, and they're at peace. And I, I really enjoy that. Now, about the creative process of doing an icon. Well, next slide, next slide. First of all, here we have some of the more popular uh, well-known Coptic iconographer's work, which is really the definition of today's Coptic iconography. From the right, we have Isaac Fanous, and then we have uh, Medor Latif, and they, they were from the, the past century, and then in either late 1800s or I think late 1800s, uh, one of the most well-known iconographers in Egypt was an Armenian, Johan the Armenian. And you see his work everywhere across Egypt. And some of it is really, really great and beautiful. And unfortunately, I did not use the best example of his work. But he had an Egyptian helper who especially helped with uh, the Coptic writing. And a few years ago, I had the great, great pleasure of meeting Bedour Latif and her husband. And it was just really, really neat to meet someone I considered like a teacher, even though we had never met, because I tried to learn what I liked best from each of the, the great iconographers and just kind of blend it into something that I could do. We have here, some various uh, Saint Mary with with the infant Jesus. That uh, one style, especially in Greek and Russian icons, they paint the icon and then they cover it with gold or silver. It's to protect the icon from getting dirt or or too many hands touching it. They show the face, they show the hands, but the rest of it's covered with silver or gold. And in the middle is a very, very ancient icon from Egypt. And you can see that even within a few hundred years of, of Jesus, they had the basic pose of St. Mary holding Jesus in that particular position. Now, you're going to look at that and you're going to say, well, that's so simple. That is so plain. Why couldn't they do something more intricate? 
The picture next to it is one of the, the mummy masks that show you that when they wanted to be realistic, the Egyptians were quite capable of it. I mean, that is incredibly beautiful, realistic art. But they chose to concentrate on the essence of the spiritual and let that tell the story. Down below uh, is Ethiopian art, which again, it's a simple form, and I really love Ethiopian art. The other two are used often in the Coptic church. They're actually more Byzantine. Now let me see if this is the creative process yet. No, it's not. Okay. Now European art. I've got to say, first of all, the one on the right is by a Renaissance artist during the 1400s. And this is the rest on the flight into Egypt. It's one of my absolute favorite paintings. When I was in second grade, my class went to a field trip to the National Gallery of Art in Washington. And I saw that painting, and I fell in love with it. And I, I spent my last 10 cents buying a postcard of it, which I still have. And uh, yes, European art is beautiful. I mean, Michelangelo and uh, Pieta. But the thing about European art, as beautiful as it is, it's not Coptic. And Coptic art may not be the same as European art, it has a different appearance, <coughs> but it's just as beautiful. And I see in a lot of Coptic churches, they use European art. Even some of the cathedrals in Egypt use European art. And that's throwing away your heritage, your culture. And it's fine to have European art at home. I have a ton of European art at home. But, you know, in a Coptic church, you keep that part of your culture, just as you keep the Coptic hymns. You like the song Amazing Grace? That's great. Play it at home. But not during the liturgy. <laughs> European art can also be terrible. Um, this is a painting, it's a Renaissance painting, that I saw it on a cruise ship. And you see that the angel Gabriel has come to St. Mary with the Annunciation. And look at St. Mary. She's cowering in fear. The angel has his hand up like he's saying, hey! <laughs> and there is a cat hissing at the angel. And in the, in the form of this painting, that the, the entire painting, the hand of God is reaching down from the clouds. And to me, it's one of the worst examples of European art I've ever seen. Ah, the creative process. Work begins. Okay, I'm supposed to do an icon. I'm supposed to have it done by the end of the month. For most of the time, I'm goofing off. Yes, Lafitte can verify this. <laughs> then I reach the panic stage. Oh my god, I'm only a week away. And then I have to flip around on the computer for a while. Then, like for the last two days, yes, I'm doing all the work while crying. <laughs> <laughs> and the deadline is the day after or something. So that's the creative process. Okay, here's a good example. When our church moved to its new location last July, two weeks before it was going to open up and Bishop Karras was going to come and inaugurate it, one of the board members called up and said, Evelyn, wouldn't it be great if in the lobby we did this really large flight into Egypt and, you know, I think, how big? And he said, it's like four foot by eight foot. And, and we need it in two weeks. 
I said, first of all, that would take, a, at the very least, a month. Four foot by eight foot, that takes a lot of time. He said, no, 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 you can do it. It takes two weeks. And I said, plus, plus, well, I think I know you're going on a cruise in one week. And so I cannot do that in one week. I cannot. And he said, oh, just try, just try. You can do it. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll try. So we hung up, and I said to Wafik, I can't believe he wants me to try to do that in one week. And Wafik said, do it for me. <laughs> so, okay, I will try. So for the next week, I painted relentlessly. I was averaging about three hours of sleep a night. Wafik was taking care of everything in the house, in addition to going to work every day. But uh, it was just pain, pain, pain. And by Friday, it was due the next day because Wafik and I were leaving Sunday to go on our cruise. So Friday, I'm still painting, I still got to finish it, and I still have to varnish it three times, and it has to be dry enough to move within a few hours. So I'm in terrible condition. I look terrible. I was getting fuzzy. It was like, okay, how, how do I paint a tree? I, I don't remember how to paint a tree. <laughs> and so I'm just pushing myself, pushing myself. So I, I'm in the workshop working on it. And Friday afternoon, Wafik came into the workshop and he was carrying a plate of fried bacon and a glass of chocolate milk. And that pulled me through. So, <laughs> That, that is part of the creative process. <laughs> and by the way, we did get it installed on Saturday, left on Sunday for our cruise. I slept two or three days, almost straight. So it, it got there in time for the opening. Uh, these are our portraits, what I call portraits of St. Mary that I've done, and uh, I'll point out the differences that, that I especially enjoy putting into my icons. First of all, rule one, I like to make any subject in my icon, yes, the Coptic style, but St. Mary is going to be pretty. The male saints are going to be Coptic, but they're going to be handsome. I, I like a good-looking guy. I like my women to be, be pretty. Woman to woman, that's my gift to St. Mary, yes. And uh, the one in the middle, I enjoy doing uh, icons on a dark blue with a gold halo because it really makes the halo pop. And as you can see, a little bit in the middle one, but more on the far right, I like to put lotus and papyrus in the icons because the, they're both symbols of Egypt and it's a reminder that this is the, the Coptic church, that it's from Egypt. Okay, these are two icons I painted uh, out of several for St. Mark's Church in Pennsylvania. You can see they're a lot taller than I am. And one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that went wrong was that while I was finished with them and putting the varnish on, and, and gold leaf is kind of tricky, without thinking, I put my hand on the gold leaf to reach over to varnish, and sure enough, on I think it was the one of Jesus. I I damaged the gold leaf. So now I've got this area of damaged gold leaf. They're due tomorrow. So first of all, I tried to fix the gold leaf, and it looked like gold leaf that someone had tried to fix. So I tried another method. It didn't look good. So by one o'clock in the morning. I painted an angel over the damaged gold leaf, 
But now that meant an angel had to be painted on the other side of the damaged gold leaf and also on both sides of the other icons. <laughs> so I finished painting them like at four in the morning and now I had to varnish them three times. So I went to sleep like at about six in the morning and we got up at seven to load them into a trailer and take them but I actually like the angels better, so maybe that was just their way of saying, no, no, you need to include us. <laughs> and by the way, when I'm painting an icon, I usually stay up late. I'm a night person, and so I, I, I stay up late painting. And a lot of times, I just paint till... I, I don't even get up to go to bed. I just put the, the brush in water and lean over on the sofa and go to sleep, even with the lights on. And if the lights are off or on, either way, when I wake up during the night, sometimes I'm greeted by a very large icon of Jesus or St. Mary or one of the saints, and it's actually a very nice way to wake up. <laughs> on this large icon of St. Mary, well, on both, both icons of St. Mary and Jesus, that are, when they are sitting on their thrones, that I like to put on the rug beneath their, their feet, like uh, a design that shows the mountains, the river. It's basically things of which Jesus is Lord of. And so since these were going to be very large icons, I wanted to make it more intricate. So with Jesus, yes, I put a lot of Detail in the, you know, the stars, the fields, the everything. And then I'm thinking, yeah, we need to do something different with St. Mary. I have a few monk friends who are gracious enough, or maybe out of pity, help me. And they talk me through some things, and they check my Coptic spelling. And I was saying to one of my monk friends, what can I do that's different for St. Mary that will still match what I've done for the the carpet under Jesus. And he suggested, why don't you use symbols of St. Mary? And I thought, well, that sounds neat. So I, I was using flowers, but also you see like a censer and a lamp and a burning bush. The thing of it was, this was due in a week, and doing all of this intricate detail work, that took a week. And so it's like, why do I start things like this? Why do I, I could just, something blue, that would have been fine, but no, let's do something intricate. Well, people sometimes have the opportunity to paint, and what has happened in the past, if, if we go back to the one of St. Mary, let's, I was doing an icon show a few years ago, and they asked me if I would paint on the icon, up on a stage. This was at a Greek church that was having icons of all the Orthodox churches. Would I paint on, on a stage and just demonstrate painting an icon? So I really didn't want to, but she convinced me, and I had a large icon of St. Mary. It was almost finished. So I was like, okay, it's almost finished. It's not like something you're going to see and it looks, uh, at a bad stage. So as I'm on the icon, on the stage painting the icon, you know, a couple people would walk by and say, eh, nice icon. After a while, I said to Buffy, you know the white dots that are on the chair that St. Mary and Jesus sit on, it, it, it symbolizes the stars of heaven. I had put the dots on, and I said to Buffy, just take the brush, and put another white dot on top of it, just as a, a second layer. And I'm going to go get a coat. So while Fig starts putting the dots on top of the white dots, and I go, and I get a coat, and I come back in, and, and there's a, people are gathered around the stage, and I'm hearing them say things like, wow, what an artist, great icon. <laughs> And while Fink is standing there, and he's holding 
the, the palette with the paint on it in one hand, and he's standing, you know, like. <laughs> I just sat down and drank my Coke. <laughs> A reminder that uh, one of the, the when, when Jesus uh, began his public career, it was at a wedding in Cana, and it's kind of a reminder that I owe someone here an icon that I just haven't delivered to him yet, and I'm sorry. Okay, Saint Mary is shown at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified, and also with St. John. And in this particular one, uh, there's two other women. I always intend Mary Magdalene to be the one at the bottom, you know, she's on the ground. I, I really admire Mary Magdalene, and I always envision her as being dramatic. So instead of standing there stoically, like the others, I always have her doing some She's on the ground, or she's like this, or something. But St. Mary, uh, of course, you know, she stands with dignity. And then, uh, on, on this, uh, we were just about to celebrate uh, the Pentecost, and it was like two weeks away or something, and a priest said, oh, could you do a Pentecost for me? And I was like, oh, I guess. And then another priest came by and said, well, if you're doing it for him, I need to have one too. So again, this started one of the, I'm painting all the time things. It's neat to me that this also specifically includes St. Mary and, and two other women, because uh, it's just nice to see St. Mary taking part in some of the ministry and, and what followed the crucifixion. Uh, this is a Greek icon showing the, the death of St. Mary. Okay, you can see the apostles around her and uh, a couple of saints. They're the ones with uh, crosses on their clothes. Uh, some of the ladies who, who took care of St. Mary. You can see that, but also you see Jesus standing there, and he's holding St. Mary as a child. And she's wrapped in white, like swaddling that you would put on a, a baby. And it's also a sign of purity. And Jesus is taking her soul to heaven. He is, he is attending her death, even though the other people may not see it. And you can see the angels in, in grays and, and white and black. The angels are there too. We don't see them, but they are attending the death. And then we also have the, the uh, Assumption of St. Mary and uh, we, in this I have Thomas coming by in the cloud, witnessing it, and they're looking at her, her coffin on the on earth, and they don't see her. And so, uh, this is what we're we're celebrating in a few days. And in this Greek icon, she has ascended into heaven, and Jesus is crowning her as the Queen of Heaven. This is one I did when um, Egypt had its, its revolution a few years ago. And you know, the, the scenes on television was a lot of violence, and you don't really know which direction this was going to take. So I, I felt the urge to do an icon of everything I love about Egypt. We have St. Mary and Jesus, and the lotus, the pyramids, the papyrus, the Nile River, and we have things from ancient Egypt, we have things from modern Egypt. And it was just kind of like my Valentine to Egypt with the hopes that everything works out okay. 
And basically, that's the story of St. Mary, as shown in Icon, and also my story of doing Icons. And it's really a great blessing and pleasure, great honor to be able to do Icons. The thing about Icons, they tell a story. And you want the icon to be interesting for people to look at and want to start looking at details to see the story. When I am going to do an icon, it's with a prayer that God will help me do this icon that will help bring people to Him. And also with a, a you know, a, a plea to the saint to help me. Again, do an icon that brings honor to the saint and gets people interested in this saint and therefore become closer to God. Again, it's a great honor and, and, and pleasure that I was able to, to come to this. And thank you for inviting me and great to be here. Uh, what a wonderful congregation and beautiful surroundings. So, I do want to say thank you. Um, Evelyn and I have always, you know, talked about this. Evelyn, when you're going to come to the church, and she was like, oh, I'm busy, we're busy, so I had to invite her as a speaker in order to get it. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm glad that you and Ophie came. Also, Evelyn um, is the, the one who has painted our patron saint, St. Barnabas and St. Susanna. And uh, I can tell you the number of times I've stared at those pictures because I have them at home. Um, I'm just appreciating all the nuances. And so um, it's always great to have the one who painted those two because I've never seen other icons like them before. So, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Evelyn.